Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of 5-Minute Gaming News, the show that may or may not be five minutes. Today in the... Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of 5-Minute Gaming News with me, Ben Starr, and not Jesse Cox, a show that might or might not be five minutes long. So today in the news, it looks like there is some more Resident Evil remakes on the way, including potential spin-offs. You heard that right. According to Games Radar last Thursday, Capcom posted their general shareholder meeting Q&A, where the company fielded all sorts of questions from investors. One shareholder asked if Capcom would be providing high-end visual remakes of only the main numbered entries in the Resident Evil series. To this, Capcom answered that it's carrying out discussions regarding the future expansion of this series so it can be enjoyed. So it kind of sounds like, in a roundabout way, we're getting a Code Veronica remake? Maybe, I don't know, I'm quite excited. And potentially something more, maybe Resident Evil 5. Are we gonna get Chris Redfield punching a boulder? Did someone say Chris Redfield punching a boulder? I'm trying to do a show. I personally only want Chris Redfield punching boulders, so please, 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 Capcom, give us more Resident Evil. Resident Evil 4 was incredible. Give us more. We want it. We need it. In other news, we finally got some information on what we can expect from Baldur's Gate 3, thanks to the aptly named panel from hell. I was there on Friday. It was a ton of fun. Uh, <laughs> if you watch the live stream, you could probably hear me laughing the entire time in the background. And developers Larry and Studios gave everyone an inside look as to what players can look forward to seeing before the game launches out of early access on PC August 3rd. Some of the featured elements include newspapers that will reflect your actions in the world, detailed character customization, the reveal of the final origin character, the Dark Urge, romance options, and more. And speaking of Dark Urges, the one piece of info that has taken the internet by storm is well, we'll just show you. <laughs> That's right, romances can get real wild, wink, in Baldur's Gate 3. I cannot stress this enough though, having played Early Access, but more importantly played a lot of the changes they're making to the final release, it is the most D&D &D game that ever d and I I cannot explain it to you in a way that will make any sense except for it is straight up just the campaign fantasy of your dreams where you go in, create a character, be it one of the characters they already have for you or a custom character, and you just live out your role-playing fantasy. You could play the story, sure, but you could also just spend a hundred hours doing whatever the hell you want. Heist a bank, uh, go around murder hoboing. The thing I think I want to do is create like a, a pure, pure paladin. It's like, I'm here to help friends, but at the same time, have that underlying dark urge and see how far I can push it. Because the dark urge kind of says like, kill, murder, cut off a hand or whatever, blood, you know? And to have a paladin who's this guy who rejects that, how long can I push that off? Because eventually, the dark urge is gonna make you roll for things, right? It's gonna start intimidating you and being like, you really wanna kill these people. And I wanna see how far I can last before it starts forcing me to do it, and I roll badly and stuff. That could be so much fun. And again, that is the kind of thing that you would see in a D&D campaign with friends. And, and this is, it's really cool. I cannot stress this enough. I'm very excited for this. The real question then is, Baldur's Gate 3 gonna give Starfield a run for its money when we have this sort of RPG off this fall? Honestly, I think it's probably two different types of gamers, but if you only have so much time and you're just a general RPG fan, do you go with wanting to explore a thousand planets or do you go with the D&D &D campaign of your dreams? I know which I'm choosing. I'm going full D&D. &D. This is right up my alley, but um, let me know. This might be different for you. That's what the comments are for. Anyway, it's Monday, so that means it's time for new releases. This Wednesday, the long-awaited sequel to the critically acclaimed 2016 game Oxenfree arrives. In Oxenfree 2 Lost Signals, players take on the role of Riley as she returns to her small coastal hometown of Kamina five years after the events of the first game. However, when Riley starts to chat with strangers over her walkie-talkie and begins to investigate mysterious radio signals, what she uncovers is more than she bargained for. Oxenfree 2 has been one of my most anticipated games of the year. I cannot wait to play it on the 12th. More importantly, if you haven't seen the video yet, they sent me a radio that is from the game world and it broadcasts a bizarre and totally crazy signal. 
Absolutely love it. Check out that video for some really cool radio play drama fun. Big fan. Then on Friday, July 14th, it's raining dinos? That's right, Capcom's Exo Primal hits digital and physical stores. In the future, humanity is threatened by a new type of pandemic. The year is 2040. Sudden dinosaur outbreaks have engulfed the globe in a crisis that threatens humanity's very existence. Yes, that is the actual story summary from Steam. In order to stop this dinodemic, it's up to you and your friends to don your exosuits and take out some dinosaurs in various online and tea-based gameplay. And that's the news for today from Merry Old England. I'm here in my hotel room on a webcam with webcam microphone. Please forgive me. I will be back to normal next week, but uh, special thank you to Ashley Roboto for filling in for me last week. Amazing work. And of course, to Ben Starr for stopping by today. You can check out Ben, of course, as Clive in Final Fantasy 16. Anyway, that is it for me. See y'all tomorrow for another episode of 5-Minute Gaming News.